In this video, you'll learn the most important rigging mechanism. Now you have a character attached to a simple rig. It only uses parenting to define the relationships between the bones. Blender allows us to create much more sophisticated rig mechanisms using a system of constraints. This is the list of constraints and it may look like a lot, but at this stage we'll focus mainly on one constraint, inverse kinematics or IK. So don't worry about this big list, you will uncover a good portion of it bit by bit as you follow the course. Now what exactly is IK? Forward kinematics, or FK, is the default mode of parented bones, which you should already understand. If you move or rotate a parent bone, all of its children will move with it. Inverse kinematics is the inverse or opposite of that. It allows you to control the end of a bone chain, and the bones up the chain will adjust their positions accordingly and automatically. In practice, this is almost always applied to the legs of a character, because without IK, the legs move with the body and they can easily sink through the ground. Animating even a basic walk this way is a pain. So let's set up the IK for the legs. Let's go to edit mode. And I want my IK to affect the shin and the thigh. So I'm going to need a special control at the ankle. So I'll select the connection at the ankle. And I'm going to work only on one side for now, so I'll disable x-axis mirror. Then press E to extrude the bone, and then Y to make the bone straight. Select this bone, and very importantly, press Alt-P and clear parent. Press F2 and name the bone IK target.l. Now go to pose mode. And when you go to pose mode, you'll have access to the bone constraints. Be careful not to use the object constraints above. For rigging, we want bone constraints. Inverse kinematics is applied on the last bone that you want to affect. So I'm going to select the shin, go to bone constraints and choose inverse kinematics. To complete the basic setup, I need to set up a target, which will be the armature. And that gives us access to a bone inside the armature which will become the target or control of the IK. Click on it and type target to find your IK target bone and select it. Now the IK affects the whole character. That is because chain length is set to zero, which means no limit. We have to set it to two so that it affects only two bones, the shin and the thigh. Another important aspect of inverse kinematics is a pole target. A pole target controls where the IK chain is pointing to. Currently, we can bend this leg in all sorts of directions, but if I go to edit mode, select the connection at the knee, press E and Y to extrude the bone. Again, press Alt P and clear parent, and then move it away from the knee on the Y axis. I can go back to pose mode, and back to my IK constraint and set a pole target in the same way. First, select the armature, then the bone. And I have to name this bone something like IK pole.l. And now I can set it in the bone field. The leg will flip. There is a mathematical reason for that, but all you have to do is tweak the pole angle. And if you followed my video exactly, it would be minus 90. But if it is not, just play with this value until your leg returns to its default position. Now the knee will always point at the pole target, which means the knee is much more stable. And I can also move this pole to orient the knee. At this stage, there are two common problems with the IK setup. One, if your knee is not bending as it should, it most likely means that your leg bones are not oriented correctly. So in edit mode, if I select the knee joint and move it to the side so that it creates an unnatural bending of the knee, then the knee will also start bending in this direction. So I'm going to undo. And so from the front view, keep your leg bones aligned in a straight line. And from the side view, 
bend the leg slightly in the direction of the knee. This very slight bend is enough and the IK will now know what to do. The other common problem, if I offset the IK target, when I switch to pose mode, the leg will jump to the IK target. So to fix this, go back to edit mode, select the ankle joint, press shift S cursor to select it, then select the IK target, shift S selection to cursor. And now in pose mode, your leg will stay exactly where it is. Shift S, cursor to world origin to bring the 3D cursor back to the center. This is the IK setup, but if you play with your rig, you may notice some problems, such as the foot sinking through the ground. To fix that, go to edit mode, select the foot, shift select the IK control, and press control P, keep offset. Now the foot is not parented to the shin, but it is parented to the IK control, which is fine because in pose mode, when I move the IK control, it moves the whole leg and the foot sticks to the IK target because of the parenting we just did. And most importantly, when I move the body down, the foot now stays on the ground. But if I move the body up, I can disconnect the foot and the shin because they are no longer parented and connected. One easy solution is to just be careful not to disconnect them. But if you want to resolve this, you can use another constraint. Select your foot and give it a copy location constraint. Set the armature as a target again, and the bone will be shin.l. So we are telling the foot to always follow the shin. However, by default, this constraint try to match the head of the bones. But there is a head tail slider, which you can set to one, so that the foot will now follow the tail or the end of the shin bone. And that is the whole setup. Now we cannot disconnect the foot. There is just one final tweak that I recommend. Go to edit mode, select the pole target, shift select the IK target, press control P and choose keep offset. Now, if I go to pose mode, I can just grab the IK target, move it and rotate it. And anatomically, this is more or less how the leg behaves. This control also controls the foot. I can still rotate it manually, but I would rather just use one control. This means that I can manipulate the leg and achieve almost any leg pose with just one control. And this is perfect. Believe it or not, in rigging, we strive for simplicity. To symmetrize the IK, go to edit mode, select the entire leg, including all IK bones, right click and symmetrize, and you'll have the right leg set up with one click. Nice. You now have a solid IK setup. Animators are going to love those IK legs. You will learn a lot more about IK later in the course. But what you need more now is to expand your rigging arsenal. One tool that is simply not optional if you want to get out of the valley of the suck is weight painting. So in the next video, you will learn my battle-tested weight painting workflow. And because it's actually not that difficult, we'll also cover other nice tools such as setting bone shapes. Whenever you're ready, keep going.